I have a confession to make. Of the many kids I diagnosed with ADHD over the past 40 years, I was probably wrong somewhere between 50 and 80 percent of the time. I started diagnosing kids with hyperactivity attention problems and low impulse control in 1975. This is not an easy thing for me to admit. Many of these children went on to receive medication for a problem they may not have had. Let me be clear. I did nothing immoral, illegal, or unethical. I simply did what thousands of other psychologists, physicians, and pediatricians were doing then and are still doing now. I followed the guidelines in the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual and noted all the necessary symptoms required for the ADHD diagnosis. In September of 1992, I started working with a local holistic dentist named Dr. Sambatero. Then about 10 years ago, Dr. Sambatero and I turned our attention to adult sleep apnea and how it could be effectively treated with dental intervention. Now, sleep apnea is a very serious condition leading to multiple dangerous health consequences, including death. Then about two years ago, we came across a pivotal seven-year study of 11,000 children by Dr. Karen Bonick. She looked at kids with sleep disordered breathing, SDB, from ages six months to seven years. Her findings were stunning. SDB in young children led to a 60 to 80% increase in risk in most of the same symptoms as ADHD. Essentially, that means that many of the numerous kids I diagnosed with ADHD over the past 40 years may not have had ADHD at all. Instead, they could have been suffering from sleep and breathing problems. Here's the real concern with that. Although ADHD medication can be helpful for kids that actually have ADHD, it is not an effective treatment for sleep disordered breathing. Unfortunately, by hiding the symptoms, it may only make the underlying SDB condition worse. And if I knew then what I know now about sleep disordered breathing, I would never have diagnosed a child with ADHD without first having them evaluated for sleep and breathing problems. Dr. Sambatero and I are committed to do whatever it takes to bring this information to every parent and every child we can reach. Understand there are effective drug-free treatments for SDB. There are also fairly inexpensive and relatively easy preliminary tests to determine if your child has a sleep and breathing problem. This is why we have created our Effortless Sleep program and why we invite you to come join us in our efforts to bring this to the attention of every parent. Thank you for watching and I sincerely hope you can join us in this effort.